brothers and sisters. Good afternoon to all of you who have come to celebrate, honor, recall the contribution of the legendary, the matriarch of broadcast standard in St. Lucia, a name synonymous with excellence, with high quality, with standard, second to none, the great Margaret Robert Steele. We want to welcome in particular the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Information and Culture, Mr. Calvin Lee. All of you broadcasters who are here throughout the information family, former colleagues of Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele, family in Grenada, Scotland, Canada, throughout the world, we welcome you as you join us through this live broadcast. We want to welcome those of you who were her neighbors, who attended the Sunday service with her when she could. All of you well wishers. As we pause, we set aside this moment to recognize her and to recall happy memories with Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele. In fact, we were laughing, those of us who knew her at Radio St. Lucia, that Mrs. Steele died Carnival Tuesday. If anybody knew Margaret Robert Steele, she was in her element for outside broadcasts, especially during Carnival Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So we want to say thank you to God for allowing us to experience such a beautiful soul, a lovely spirit. And we want to ask you to listen, those of you who thought you may have known her, to listen to the contribution she made to broadcasting in St. Lucia. I now call on Ms. Barbara Jacob Small, who will lead the first of our media tributes. Good afternoon, church. Much has been written and yet still more to be said today about Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele. I'm loath to sound repetitive, for that would be a reproach to those at whose proverbial feet I sat and learned in my formative years as a broadcaster. Mrs. Steele was one such early influence. I first met her as a Form 4 student of St. Joseph's Convent when I was selected to participate in a project to create a youth radio show in the vein of RSL's popular youth stimulus radio project of the late 70s. Mrs. Steele and deceased Harold George are prominent in my memory as part of the Radio St. Lucia tableau of people who encouraged that cohort of SJC and SMC youth learning the rudiments of radio and developing an appreciation of media in all its operational dimensions. Indeed, Mrs. Steele was part of the management of Radio St. Lucia at the time and thus part of the kind of thinking that, as the youth stimulus theme song said, tomorrow belongs to the children. Later on, when I joined Radio St. Lucia as a junior announcer in 1980, I aspired to the superlative command of language and delivery exemplified by the likes of Mr. Winston Hinkson and Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele, but especially MRS, as we refer to her sometimes. For I was an 18-year-old girl rubbing shoulders with a female broadcast media monolith of first world standards. 
I stand on the shoulders of, good, of a good stock of female broadcasters. I say that proudly. Some whose names mean little to people under 30 today, Margaret Robert Steele, Imelda Charles, and the late Julie Betts and Valerie Albert. It is said that people do not always remember what you said, but they always remember how you made them feel. Someone also once said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. One of the most empowering experiences of my early career was to sit shoulder to shoulder with Mrs. Steele, sharing a mic on an outside broadcast. The thousand degrees of separation between our experience, our knowledge and training evaporated and we became equals, simply Margaret and Barbara, colleagues. She took control of these OBs, but all the while treating me as if I too had been trained at the BBC. Such was her professionalism. For me, that was also a learning curve for I grasped two things in real time. That intonation and inflection are not the same. Enunciation and pronunciation are altogether different vocal tools and that behind every effective outside broadcast is reams and reams of research. Secondly, what I learned was the power of her example and the power of the example of people like Jerry George. They influenced the kind of manager that I became, one that took time to nurture, to empower, and to affirm those in my charge. These are things I learned from Margaret Robert Steele. These experiences remain the bedrock of my career in broadcasting, both as a producer and a manager, and in my latter professional pursuits as a communications consultant and trainer. Sometime in the early 2000s, now out of the broadcast media, I was hired to design and facilitate training in presentation skills for meteorological officers. I called on Mrs. Steele to join me on that three-day assignment in Viewfort. The trainees were of an age to appreciate just who it was that was in their presence. And I was just pleased with myself that I had had the brainwave to call on herself the broadcast media maven of our times, Margaret Robert Steele. She delivered as only she could. Walk well, Mrs. Steele. We remember. I know I speak for Valerie and for those who are still with us when I say that some go for inscriptions on stone, but your legend is ever inscribed on our hearts. Thank you, Barbara. Your legend is inscripted on our hearts. Margaret Robert Steele taught you. She taught you with passion. She taught you with skill. If there was an area that she thought you needed to do a little work on, she would take you separately from the group whether it is to perhaps if you had a heavy tongue, perhaps if your intonation wasn't right, if your inflection wasn't right, she would teach you one on one. If your pace was too quick, she taught you to tell a story with the tone of your voice. Because in St. Lucia at that time dominating was radio and so she said the listener must be able to pick up if you are shocked if you are happy if you are surprised if you are dismayed if you are conveying the anger of the crowd or the uproar of the crowd they must pick that up in your voice and she taught that not aggressively not giving up on you. She taught that with a class, with a style, with a patience, with an understanding that was Margaret Robert Steele. I now call on Mr. David Samuels. Dave, another former colleague of Mrs. Steele.
Today was a day of reflection and uh, to a certain extent nostalgia. I couldn't help when I got up this morning to think about those years spanning the late 1960s to about 1976 when I worked beside Margaret Robert Steele. MRS, her voice was unlike any other on radio in this region in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And trying to find the appropriate adjectives would just not be enough to describe its inimitable qualities. Her mentorship can easily be heard through the vocal expression of generations of broadcasters spanning the 1970s to the beginning of the new millennium. I am confident her legacy will continue to find expression through those of us who benefited from her instruction and guidance for which we will be eternally grateful. My first recollection of Margaret was about 1969-70 when I was a rookie announcer at WIBS, Winded Islands Broadcasting Service, which later became Radio St. Lucia. Winston Hingson, the program manager at the time, had proceeded to the British Broadcasting Service, BBC, in London on a six-month course. So Margaret, who was based in Grenada, was seconded to St. Lucia to hold the fort, so to speak. In those days, I read the JC's radio bingo numbers several afternoons weekly, hosted DJ dates with Jeff Fady, recently deceased, on Saturday evenings, as well as the TTT show, Top 12 Tunes on Sunday evenings. During her stints at WIBS and then later RSL, Margaret always took the time to pass on gems of professionalism from her vast knowledge of broadcasting to us. The young on-air staff, we learned the importance of diction, articulation, pronunciation, intonation, voice modulation, voice inflection, how to read at a steady pace, conduct interviews properly, and how to present programs of every musical genre. I vividly recall some of us participating in her announcer's classes once or twice weekly at her home in Leclerc where she resided at the time. This was later to become a regular feature for budding announcers when the move to the Mon Studios was made. Margaret was the hallmark of excellence which she eagerly passed on to the small group of us at WIBS RSL. Many of us owe our eventual media successes to her patience and pioneering efforts with us. Rest well, Margaret. As you may have heard, Mrs. Steele touched the lives of so many budding broadcasters who branched off into being media managers, owning television stations, radio stations, um, working for big entities as the communications specialists. One such person who we knew very early on in the game, who was excellent with production. In fact, almost second to none was Bernard Fannis. Bernard Fannis had a flair for 
producing. I mean, he was a news editor, he did the news, he worked in the newsroom, but Bernard had a flair for telling a story and for being able to not put his personal slant, but after you listen to his production, nowadays you view his production, it made you think, it made you question, it made you, you were unsure, but it stimulated your thinking. I'm so proud to present this afternoon a production by Bernard Fannis on Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele, produced by Bernard Fannis and Calabash TV. This video tribute takes us back to two key highlights in the stellar career of broadcaster Margaret Robert Steele. We start with the most recent, the 2019 investiture ceremony for the Queen's Birthday Honours. Investiture of Member of the Civil Division of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, MBE, Miss Margaret Robert Steele. Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele is a career broadcaster whose work spans decades on major events in history. She joined the Windward Island Broadcasting Service in 1956 as an announcer and is trained as a Caribbean broadcaster, having attended courses in England with the BBC. She is experienced in radio productions, musical features, news reports, and as a commentator. Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele has always had a fond relationship with St. Lucia, having been born in Grenada. And in 1996, she took over the management of the substation. She has worked freelance for Radio Caribbean and SLTV. She married in 1969 and settled in St. Lucia and was appointed to work with Radio St. Lucia in 1975. And eventually, she became senior program organizer at the station. Viewpoint, a brief question and answer feature on some topic of local or regional interest. Hear the public's views on a social, educational, political or cultural topic every week. This is Viewpoint. With her background in broadcasting, Mrs. Steele was often called on to conduct training for young broadcasters and was instrumental in training Radio St. Lucia and Government Information Service staff in 1995 and 1999. Her familiar voice became synonymous with the 6 o'clock news broadcast heard every day across the nation. For committed service in the area of broadcasting, Miss Margaret Robert Steele is being awarded the member of the British Empire Medal. icons were celebrated that day, Rick Wayne for journalism, sports and entertainment, and Margaret Robert Steele for broadcasting. This is the mass site at Greatway Park, the site where His Holiness Pope John Paul II will celebrate mass this evening. And this is probably the arrival of His Holiness because you can hear the shouts of the people in the background and there is the Pope Mobile. And what a happy moment and an exciting moment 
for all Catholics in this little island of ours, St. Lucia. With me is Mike Orbiton, who is the youth coordinator for the Archdiocese. And he will be sharing this broadcast with me. There we have the motorcycle outriders escorting the Right Honourable Prime Minister, John G. M. Compton and Mrs. Compton. Her many years of training, her vast experience with live broadcast, and her soothing presentation made the coverage of the papal visit a masterclass in outside broadcasts. You're listening to a 700 strong choir. This choir is augmented by voices from the Uenora Voices, St. Mary's College, St. Joseph's Convent, and the Girls' Vocational School, and conducted by Sister Claire of the St. Joseph's Convent. Hope Mobile, still moving through, waving crowd, strong Slavic face. No different from we've seen him so many times, Mike. Yes, the crowd is now cheering vociferously, cheering the pontiff who has been awaited for so long. St. Lucia, let our first thoughts be thoughts of praise and thanksgiving to the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear young people, and all of you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I encourage you in these words of the letter to the Hebrews, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Thank you very much. God bless you. And so the Holy Communion, which we've just witnessed, has come to an end. And the Holy Mass, conducted by His Holiness, John Paul II. This has been such a tremendous spiritual experience for all gathered here today. With me is Mike Orbiton, who will share this broadcast and particularly the service with you. We've been very privileged indeed to be part of it. And Mike, as we prepare to say goodbye to our viewers, any comments? Yes, Margaret, I just want to say that it has been a tremendous experience for me being here, being part of the broadcast, and hearing the words of His Holiness really take root within me as a Catholic. It is, it is a real tremendous experience of faith and I want to say that I'm especially privileged to have been here with you. I agree with you. Before we go, I must thank the Broadcast Equipment Rental Company of Burbank, California, who have done such a tremendous job here. We'd like you to know that the management and staff of HGS appreciate your being here in St. Lucia today. And so we say goodbye to all of you, and in the words of His Holiness, we wish you all a new heart of peace. can a student pay to his teacher. Thank you, Bernard. Excellent work. And you notice so many things there. The power, the importance of preserving archival material. 
And so at this point we make it, we appeal to the powers that be to protect St. Lucia's archival material. It took us down memory lane in so many ways. Wonderful piece. When we were thinking of somebody to do the eulogy, everybody was unanimous. It had to be, oh, sorry. I think my eyes were, had just scrolled on the page. But anyway, let me just finish my sentence. We recognize in our midst the last remaining WIBS personality in the person of Mr. Winston Hinkson, and we would like to we would like to acknowledge your presence with us, sir, Mr. Winston Hinkson. I now call on Reverend Anyard with a tribute. As you know, Mrs. Steele came to this church and worshipped, and she'd like to say a few words to us, please. Reverend Anne Yard. Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele, a petite, distinguished, charming, and approachable lady, was always among the just the few to arrive at this church whenever she attended worship, and sat three benches away from the main entrance on the right side of the aisle, where she greeted members as they walked in with a great smile. One duty she performed admirably was reading the scripture lesson, and for this personally, I admired her. It was a joy hearing the words of the Lord read from her, enunciation, pronunciation, or diction, and many times after she would have read, I would go home, look to myself in the mirror, and try to articulate and behave like her. Mrs. Robert Steele, sat in front of Lady Simmons and they became good friends, checking up on each other by phone, especially on Mrs. Robert Steele's birthday, which is the 5th of March. After Lady Simmons' passing, her daughter Suzette committed checking her, which she appreciated, and would say to Susie, Susie, that's one call I know I will receive on my birthday. Personally, for Reverend Anyard, I was just an ordinary bench member like you sitting there today. And every 5th of March, once it's a Sunday, the late Elijah Greenwich, along with two or three other members, showed up at our doorstep. We enjoyed the fruitcake and the sorrel. We sang, she would chat, and we would say goodbye. Mrs. Robert Steele is indeed, or was indeed, a role model and she played a very important role within this congregation. On behalf of the superintendent, minister, Reverend Philbert Delaney and his wife, Janice Sawyer Delaney, Reverend Smith and his wife, the circuit stewards, the congregational stewards, and the members of this congregation would want to say she would be greatly missed. But if you are thinking of something to live on, to 
carry on Sister Margaret Steele's legacy, I would encourage any one of the group of trainers whom she has trained to invite or come in and train some of our young people where we can have some young Margaret Steele. I thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend. As long as the young people are open to the training, open to the training. So we come to the end of this part of the tribute. But if you pick up a voice newspaper uh, last weekend, the center spread was dedicated to Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele, the voice newspaper of St. Lucia, where many of her colleagues at Radio St. Lucia and those persons who knew her professionally and personally paid tribute to her. So I invite you to get yourself a copy of the Voice newspaper of St. Lucia. Thank you very much for your kind listening air and we will begin the service shortly.
Savior, listen while I sing.
seated. This time I invite the designate Stephanie Lewis to come forth for the prayer of comfort. Father God, giver of life, we thank you for the gift of life of our dearly beloved Margaret. As we gather here today to say our last goodbyes, may you grant us the grace to keep her always in loving memory, with grateful hearts to forever treasure the benefits of her friendship, her teachings and instructions, the sharing of her gifts and talents, and most of all, her tender love. O oh Lord, we ask that you send us the warmth and love of your divine compassion and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Embrace in your loving arms, O oh Lord, all who are saddened by her passing and grant us your peace. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who gives us all that we need. Amen. We are met in this solemn moment to commend the life of Mrs. Margaret Robert Still into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed, and in, his who, in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall our deceased sister in humble trust, hearing the words of scripture and formal remembrance. At this time we have the tributes and the eulogy from those who have been designated to share the life of Sister Margaret. I was deeply saddened to learn of the passing of my dear sister-in-law, Margaret, with whom I shared an unbreakable bond that was created when we both married Steele Brothers in Grenada. I have many happy memories of our younger years when our personal and professional lives were perfectly aligned. It was a very glamorous time when we were married to, as we were married to two dynamic men who were known as great dancers, so our lives were spent at parties and we spent many old years nights being mesmerized as we watched John and Margaret glide across the dance floor. They often got the title of best dancers. But along with the fun, the social Margaret, who was always good company, with the deeply thoughtful and caring person who was committed to her family and friends, and of course there was Margaret Robert Steele, MBE, the professional, the woman with the beautiful voice, who was trained at the BBC and had an illustrious career in radio. It is sad that our health problems meant that we did not see enough of each other in the recent years, but she will always live in our hearts. Rest in peace, my dear sister-in-law. As we continue the family tributes, we now have a tribute from Faye Roberts Miller, Margaret's sister. When I think of Margaret, my sister, I see her and her husband, John Steele, gliding over the beautifully polished wooden dance floor of the Richmond Hill Tennis Club on December 31st every year. They were perfect together and wonderful to watch. Margaret was the third daughter of Lillian and Willie Roberts of Hyde Park, 
in St. George's, Grenada. And as a child, every carnival, she was so petrified whenever the Jab Jabs passed near to our home that she ran a high temperature. Years later, when she became carnival queen, our mother was incredulous. Margaret's love and knowledge of classical music was a natural consequence of our parents, our mother a pianist, who just checked the time and key of the music in front of her and then played on. Our father a flutist, who was the local secretary of Trinity College of Music in London. Our house was always full of music. Margaret was chosen from a group of girls for tone of voice and natural presence for training at the BBC in London. On her return to Grenada, she joined the Windward Islands Broadcasting Service WIBS, the radio station which served the four Windward Islands. In the words of one of her colleagues, she became the voice of WIBS. In addition to her regular broadcasting duties, she presented a weekly classical music concert every Sunday night, drawing from her natural love of music and the knowledge gained from our parents. She also hosted a Kiddies Corner program and on occasion asked my son Robert to participate. When our daughter was married in a garden ceremony here at Hyde Park, Margaret read the Shakespeare sonnet, Let Me Not to the Marriage of True Minds. It was a joy to hear once again her superb radio voice and measured delivery. On her marriage to John Steele, she moved to St. Lucia, where she continued her career in broadcasting. When John passed away, I begged her to return to Grenada, her birthplace, where she had concerned family members and her son would have many cousins, but to no avail. We have always loved and missed her, but since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, everything became so intense and travel seemed dangerous. We have always loved you, Margaret. Join Yvonne, William, and our parents. I am the last Roberts left, and I miss you all terribly. Rest in peace. This is from her sister-in-law, Carolyn Roberts. William would have wanted to be here, and so I will try to say a few words on behalf of both of us. In my early teens, I first became aware of Margaret Roberts, the beautiful, green-eyed, charismatic voice of Wibbs. However, it was not until the summer of 1959 that I had the pleasure of meeting her in person, as that was when I met her handsome brother William, who was back home on holiday from architectural studies. The two of us, William and I, spent many lovely evenings together with Margaret and John, her boyfriend. It was during those very happy meetings that I realized she also had a lovely, rich laugh. I like to think that Margaret and I became close friends by the time William returned to London. William and I married in London in 1962, and it was only one year later when Margaret was given the opportunity to come to the BBC in London to further her broadcasting career, and William and I were delighted to be able to have her live with us in our very tiny attic apartment in Highgate, North London. It was a special time for the three of us to become even closer. William adored and admired Margaret and never hesitated to let it be known. All the males from various Commonwealth countries who attended the course with Margaret were impressed with her broadcasting ability, as well as being convinced that because she was so beautiful, she must be a royal princess. 
William and I would be amused as many of them attended, attempted to woo her. We knew their chances were zero. As she was not interested and only eager to return home to her John. Sadly, while she was at the BBC, we were faced with the news of Pa's sudden death. Margaret wanted to return home, but thought that Pa would wish her to complete the course. William flew back to be with the family while I tried to comfort and support Margaret as we dealt with the grief. And this also helped to further strengthen the ties between the two of us. Unfortunately, during the following years, we were unable to spend as much time with Margaret as we had wished due to the fact that she settled in St. Lucia and we made homes in London, Jamaica, and now Canada. However, we always kept in touch and looked forward to getting together at special occasions at Hyde Park. During the last year of William's life, he spoke constantly of Margaret, very often imagined that she was right here with us, wanted to hear her voice and never stopped begging to talk to her. I could only pray that somehow she might have been aware of his love and need for contact. It is so very sad that he never stopped asking for her until the last two days before his death when it was impossible for him to speak. And my only comfort now is to imagine he's finally at peace, at her side, and they are both free of pain and suffering. As they join Pa, Ma, and Yvonne, Margaret, you will never be forgotten. Her sister-in-law, Carolyn Roberts. Yes, is going to speak on it. Yes. So our final tribute before the eulogy, we have with us the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment and Creativity, Industries, Information and Culture, would be speaking on behalf of the Honorable Minister. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Allow me to extend condolences and apologies on behalf of Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire, the Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture, and Information, who could not be here with us today as he's out of state on government business. Today, we pay homage to Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele, MBE, who gave a lifetime to broadcasting and inspired three generations of broadcasters to strive always to be the best, especially young women who had very few female examples to follow. Mrs. Robert Steele gave 66 years of her life to broadcasting. And although born in Grenada, she, together with her husband John and son Tyrone, made St. Lucia their home. It is most fitting that we claim Margaret as a daughter of St. Lucia. Fact is, notwithstanding her birthright, her body and soul belong to St. Lucia. Our sincere condolences are extended to her son Tyrone, who is here with us and also deepest sympathies to the Roberts and Steele families, relatives, and close friends in St. Lucia, Grenada, and elsewhere around the world. Mr. Steele entered the field of broadcasting, having joined the then newly created Windward Islands Broadcasting Service, WIBS, in 1956, just after being crowned Carnival Queen of Grenada. 
that team of early broadcasters can be considered not only pioneers of Caribbean airwaves, but also pioneers of the unfolding integration movement that marched onto the Federation. As it was the WIPS policy at that time to bicycle its staff around the, the WIPS substations in each of the four islands. Having excelled as an on-air talent at WIPS headquarters in Grenada, she received a British Council Fellowship to attend the BBC London Training Centre, where she was trained in production techniques at the famous BBC Bush House Studios. The BBC's philosophy was that good broadcasters are born and they excel because they are made. She, like many of her time, were molded accordingly. As a broadcaster, she had a keen sense of that audio aesthetic which was demonstrated in how she chose music to contrast and or complement voices and speech, especially in her productions of some remarkable radio adaptations of popular West Indian short stories of the time. On her 10th anniversary at, with WIDS, she was stationed in St. Lucia, making her the first woman in a supervisory or management position in broadcasting. She went on to serve as senior programs officer at Radio St. Lucia after Whips Castries was reconstituted as the St. Lucia Broadcasting Corporation. She rode the waves of the ever-changing tides at RSL with calm and purpose. She held on to the notion that professionalism trumped everything else, as, in, as even after years in the field, it was still a man's world. Upon leaving active broadcasting, she was in demand and highly sought after as a trainer of those who wished to excel in the field. Mrs. Margaret Robert Steele was the voice that was the epitome of broadcasting professionalism. Many aspired to that high level of excellence she became known for. Many solutions will be removed from Mrs. Steele's earlier career, but as the Minister for Information recounts, ever since his youthful days, he too remembers her distinctive voice and presence on the airwaves. Solutions of all ages are endeared to her calm, well-paced, and powerful voice because of her news, re news reading at 6 p.m and on SLTV, and her voice became synonymous with quality interviews and outside broadcast com commentaries, where her descriptions were vivid and on point. Whether she commandeered the microphone at Carnival, a military parade, Remembrance Day observations at the Derek Walker Square, or state funerals. On behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, the government and people of St. Lucia, and on behalf of the many who learnt at her feet, and those who themselves have gone on to excel in the field, and in one way or other, carry the torch of her legacy, and the thousands of listeners who have been warmed and moved by her distinctive voice, and her calm personality. We thank her for her service and we salute her. May she rest in peace. Thank you. This time we will hear the eulogy. Good afternoon to everyone. I first want to express my 
profound sorrow and Margaret's passing, I truly felt a deep sadness, especially as we didn't get to, to meet since the onset of the, the misery that COVID-19 brought upon us all in St. Lucia. At the same time, I am consoled to know that she left us not in agonizing pain, but peacefully in her sleep. I extend my condolences to her family, near and far, and especially to her son, Jerome. I was recruited into the Wibbs family maybe a decade after Margaret was. And even back then, you listened to Margaret with rapturous attention. She had the voice of an unadulterated warmth and sweetness. And when Margaret came to St. Lucia to oversee the Wibbs substation, she was the picture of unadulterated beauty. Gorgeous isn't enough to express a stunning beauty. So I will settle for the phrase that is much used today, though I don't use it. Margaret was pure, unadulterated eye candy. She had won the Miss Grader Carnival Queen competition and possessed elegance, poise, and a winning smile that no doubt won over not only the judges, but everyone she met. With brains and beauty, she captured the hearts of the listening audiences around the Windward Islands and around the Caribbean. And it is no exaggeration to say she was born to be on the airwaves. Margaret was born to be on the airwaves. There's no doubt about that. She excelled at presenting all types of programs, as was the expectation of her. And this she won, her f and by this she won her, her British government fellowship to attend training at the acclaimed BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. And this institution was regarded as the standard for many Caribbean broadcasters of, the, of that era. I also regarded, um, sorry, I also had the good fortune to see my training at the BBC and we were told that we were being trained for international service. Let me pause here to say that in, in being trained for international service, We were allowed to do several things which the ordinary broadcaster was not um, suited, suited to, to do. We were able to do training for of young broadcasters and Margaret excelled in that department. We were able to voice over for certain programs. Uh, for, um, for instance, Vaughan Noel Bumblebee was uh, sometimes the voice which was used as a teddy bear, all sorts of things which broadcasters with limited resources were not expected to do. So let me pause here to say that in the mid-50s up to the 60s, broadcasting was a new career choice. We knew nothing about it, and it is in this context of the pioneering spirit of, the, of that time that I want to celebrate Margaret's place in history. She gave 66 years of her life to broadcasting, charming her listeners, and inspiring at least three generations of young broadcasters, especially young women, who found the inspiration that they needed in Margaret. When Margaret entered broadcasting, the requirement was to follow 
the instructions of the trainers. But we, Margaret and I, were also aware that we were clearing the path for others to come. The motto of WIBS was all the air your diocese, meaning that what we did on the air was for the consumption of diverse groups of people and diverse groups of interests. Margaret was also acutely aware of this and also strove to create programs in that vein. Even after achieving much accolades, what was remarkable about her was she never allowed her popularity to go to her head. She never lost sight of her position nor her humility, willing to listen to all who came into a circle, rather into her personal circle and professionally. Margaret was a private person, but she wasn't outstandish. And coming from Grenada after she married her husband, John Steele, who had a post with Cable and Wireless in St. Lucia, she was eager to make new friends and get to know her new home, St. Lucia. I wouldn't call her a party animal, but let's say Margaret knew how to have a good time. She could dance the night away. I regard Margaret as family, as it was um, sometimes my enviable task, or duty rather, to drive her around when she visited and also as she settled into a, being a new St. Lucia. I remember Tyrone, her son, who was a bundle of energy and who tested, her, tested it all if his boyish pranks and rambunctiousness. Friends, at times like this, when you sit in the company of your memory, so much comes flooding back unconsciously. Green and earth from the recesses of your mind, which sometimes are gone and forgotten. But it is in broadcasting that remember Margaret Robert Steele. She was legendary when you think of it. And when you think of the generations of broadcasters who were serious about their careers, who looked to Margaret for assistance and guidance. And especially in the areas of production, news reading, outside broadcasts, and the interview. <coughs> Excuse me. I read through the hundreds of comments on Facebook posted by St. Lucians near and far who remember her as the voice of Radio St. Lucia at the news time at 6 p.m. in the evening. They remember her too for her vivid descriptions, live and in color, during her outside broadcasts, carnival events, uh, military parades, all, a lot of events, many events which are, to coin the familiar phrase, too numerous to mention. Dave Samuels in his book, My Story, Your Voice, recalls his early years at WIBS and Margaret helping him build his vocal skills with non-stop practice. Lucella Campbell, who was then Lucella Blanchard, who resides in New Jersey, United States of America, in an email on Margaret's passing, reminisced, the news of Margaret Robert Steele's passing took me back in time to a really special period in my life as the memories of my time at Radio St. Lucia and at Wibbs are very much tied to that of Margaret joining us. A warm shone through her voice. She had that easy lilting voice and told that you could just keep on listening. It was a pleasure to MC an event with Margaret. If we list the number of young broadcasters to whom Margaret served as an example, 
and provided one-on-one -on -one instruction, it will be a rule call of broadcasting excellence, he says. Some names that easily come to mind include Barbara Jacob Small, Timmy Pipolia, Marcelino John, and Stephanie Louis. To me, the greatest gift that Margaret gave to these young broadcasters was a time to share her knowledge and skills. She saw, rather, she saw the good in everyone and wanted everyone she taught to be good as she was. I was so happy that Margaret received several awards before she passed. The St. Lucia Media Association recognized her as a friend of the association. When Margaret worked with the Venezuelan Embassy, then located upstairs in the now defunct Gaiti Cinema, she provided space for meetings and workshops. She received a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2009 and the MBE, Member of the British Empire, in 2019. I feel flattered and honored when I am told of the work I did in broadcasting and quite a bit with Margaret Robert Steele. Some have said we were trailblazers, and indeed we were. We didn't think of ourselves in that way. It was a daily job, and that job had to be done. And with few resources, we operated from a room, yes, one room, that housed studio, office, staff room, a console made from parts assembled by the WIPS engineers, the air condition unit could not be on when the mic was hot, that, when, that means that when the mic was on, Margaret would be seated on the long bench opposite me, I was reading the news then, against the wall she sat, scripting a program for, from the classics, the jazz hour, or some public service announcement, promos, and other, other scripts. I recall two very important and historic events that cemented Radio St. Lucia as a national institution. The broadcast and coverage of events in the timeline leading to independence. If you wish to quantify hard work, this would be it. It was Margaret's voice that signaled to the nation that the British Union Jack was lowered for the last time in St. Lucia and our flag was hoisted for the first time. Just before I left home, I, certain thoughts came to my mind regarding WIBS and the impact that WIBS had on the populace of the Windward Islands and the region and what contributions that Margaret made to that institution. So as we collectively say farewell to Margaret, let's not forget the role which Margaret, along with others of WIBS, played in cementing the bonds of friendship, camaraderie, and belonging between the peoples of the four Windward Islands. We, and when I say we, I mean myself, Margaret Robert Steele, Vaughan Noel of Blessed Memory, Bumblebee, David Samuel, Ben Carter, Harold George, Gregory Regis, Michelle Blanchard, who is now Mrs. Campbell, Barbara, Barbara Jacob Small, uh, my friend sitting here in the engineering department, production department, Lawrence, and others who my institutional memory does not allow me to recollect. And WIS was the last bastion of regional functional cooperation. It was doing what now the OECS does. We didn't do um, economics and what have you, but through the microphone, through broadcasting, we brought all the, the four Windward Islands together. And a lot of messages, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of um, matters which concern the four Windward Islands were expounded on WIBS and made to be understood by the people through WIBS. And this is how I wish, wish to, on a different level, to remember Margaret and her usefulness and her 
discussions and her uh, concern with what was going on in the four islands and the contribution through broadcasting um, to the people of the Windward Islands to be closer together and understand how the, the region was functioning. So Margaret, your contribution in this effort in regional cooperation is highly regarded and you should be proud. And with this, I ask that may you find peace in the embrace of your maker. I thank you. Indeed, we thank all of those who have spoken before we began the service and also in this service as they bring to us the memory of our dear sister, Margaret Robert Steele. And as we join with the family who are here, family here and overseas as they join with us in the celebration of her life. And as we offer those memories as our praises and thanksgiving to God Almighty. We will now sing hymn number 344, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life, followed by scripture reading. <coughs>
be seated. Now invite our readers to come forth for the reading of God's word. Psalms 23 from the Old Testament. A second reading from the epistles of 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to verse 9. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from the first letter of Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9 and it's entitled a living hope blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by his great mercy he has given us a new birth that by fire may be found though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, that is, the salvation of your souls. I invite us now to stand as we sing the hymn, Your Servant of God, You Servant of God, Your Master, proclaim and will remain stand standing for the reading of the gospel. <laughs>
reading is taken from John chapter 11, reading from verses 38 to 42, 44. Glory to you. Jesus raises Lazarus to life. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone, Martha. The sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they might may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of Christ. Please sit. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Redeemer. We pray in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today I invite us to reflect on the Gospel reading according to St. John, chapter 38 to 44, in light of Jesus using this moment of death to nurture the faith of his followers and also those who have come to comfort Mary and Martha in the passing of their only brother. It's always a hard task as a minister to do justice and balance during funeral especially with the purpose of a funeral service. And uh, we always know there are those in our community who has achieved much in life, contributed to the development, icons, and today one of the vocab that I have been hearing all along while I was sitting in the office as I joined, legendary, legendary. I was just uh, trying to think through, I said, I don't know if Sister Margaret would hear how I speak and hear my dictation or whatever I will pronounce word, how much would I have? One out of ten? Two out of ten? Especially coming from a totally different part of the world, with a totally different accent, pronunciation. And at times with the polysyllabic words, I just rush through, even reading in Bible, some of the names. And you would see, most of the time, I don't pronounce those who are written on the program. Because sometimes I don't know how to pronounce their names. So I would just say, could I invite the readers to come forward? A good escape, a good cover-up. But at the same time as we think of the contribution of their life and their service, Christian funerals are not about them. Are never about them. Christian funerals is how we reflect on their lives and how we use their lives to sing praises to God Almighty. And because that is the highest purpose of every human being on this earth, 
that is to bring honor to God in our living and also when we come when our life comes to pass so it's always a challenge for me to allow people how many to speak before the service how many to speak during the service with the conscious that the service is not just about telling the story of our diseased person deceased Oh, Sister Margaret, forgive me. But it is about glorifying God. Bringing glory to God. In this story, Jesus was late. Lazarus has died. Four days in the tomb. Yet Jesus drew to the attention, Do you believe that I am the resurrection? and the life then in our scripture reading today he gave this statement and the statement he gave and uh, in verse 41 so they took away the stone and Jesus looked up and said father I thank you for having heard me and he continued, I knew that you have heard me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you have sent me. Here, Jesus reminded the people as he prayed to God, as alluded in verse 40, did I tell you did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God this death of Lazarus was a way in which people would see the glory of God as we reflect on all that we have shared today in the story and the memory of Sister Margaret, we heard how death affected her own journey, the death of her pa, which she had to remain in England and the words that were shared that it was a motivational factor in her life to continue. And I know death affects us in different ways. Some, it devastates their lives. And some, it is a moment of motivation to carry on the legacy, the memory. But today, as we celebrate the life of Sister Margaret, I invite us to reflect on how Jesus used the death of Lazarus to draw the faith of those who are listening, the faith that they can see the glory of God. The world is filled with death. Conflicts, disturbances to life, that legends and memories of good things can at times be overshadowed by the challenges of the reality of life. But the death of Lazarus, Jesus used that moment to open the eyes of people so they can see the glory of God which is at work in every life that only faith can see. I really don't know what is your level of faith today. But I hope this moment as we celebrate a legend, a person who has contributed so much to our community, the standard of professionalism, the life of the industry of communication and communicating in a world in which communication is almost now a one-way street. People choose their news outlet 
not to hear facts but to confirm their facts not to open to debate and reason but already making up their mind they are just going to listen to sweet voices to say I said I am right I am right I am right but not open conversation to communication in which there is a speaker and a receiver I personally chose the hymn 248 remembering the life of sister Margaret as a voice and a golden voice of Saint Lucia but also to use her life Just to glorify God Almighty. That our world would be a better world if people are nurtured in faith to see the glory of God in all that they do and all they commit their life in. And this is a moment in which we celebrate her life as we come in this moment of death like Jesus. Jesus used those moments to draw people. He's saying, you know, this is the time in which only God must be glorified. A woman who was trained, BBC, when they were saying BBC, I said, BBC, BBC? The BBC, the BBC? That the BBC of the BBC? Yes, the BBC, that very BBC. <laughs> her life her testimony and her all must be presented before the throne of grace as a hymn of thanksgiving and praise to God as I was listening uh, watching the, her tribute especially with the coming of his holiness and the words of his holiness Saint Lucia Saint Lucia praise God and as we sit today to give thanks for the life of sister Margaret may her death her life and her death draw us as a community to a life of faith and especially that all that her memory brings into our lives and have taught us that it be a thanksgiving and praise to God and God alone. Jesus said in John chapter 11 verse 40, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? When he was driving this community to believe, to faith, he was wanting them to use all they are and all who they are and all they are to glorify and honor God. Whether it's in broadcasting, whether it's in whatever profession that God has called us, at the end of the day death reminds us that we have a level playing field legends and non-legends broadcasters broadcasters sorry again sister Margaret pardon me for pronunciation whatever in life King, Queen, dictators, one day, one day, one day our lives will just be memory. But it is important that those memory, a memory lived out in faith and brought before the throne of grace, 
as praises that are sung up to God to glorify God, God alone. So as we sit today as a community, farewelling our dear sister, those who are joining family or only son, relatives, the Melodies community in St. Lucia, the Christian community in a nation we love and we aspire that this nation to be a good one. It will only be good if we praise God with our whole life, whether we live or whether we die. When we are living and in our death, when people speak about us, they will also use our story just to glorify God and God alone. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we affirm our faith in God, I invite us to stand as we boldly confess our faith in the apostolic creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God. We have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God, our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and forever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of her whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and blessing her life has brought to others for her service to her generation, according to your will and for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness, which has followed her all the days of her life, that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will sing the hymn, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus. <laughs>
As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. And he knows our frame, he remembers that we are thus. As for men, his days are as grass, as flower, as the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And the place therefore shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting from those who fear him. Thank you.